Elvis Aaron Presley was born January 8, 1935 in a two-room house in East Tupelo, Mississippi to Vernon Elvis Presley and Gladys Love Smith Presley. He was raised both in East Tupelo, which merged with Tupelo in 1948, and later in Memphis, Tennessee, where his family moved when he was 13. Elvis had a twin brother, Jesse Garon Presley, who died at birth. In 1949 the family moved to Lauderdale Court's public housing development which was near musical and cultural influences like Beale Street, Ellis Auditorium and the Poplar Tunes record store along with the Sun Studio about a mile away. In her book, Elvis and Gladys author Elaine Dundee wrote that those close to Elvis as a boy say he was a fan of comic book superhero Captain Marvel Jr. and would later model his trademark hairstyle and some of his stage costumes on the comic book character. Elvis took up the guitar at 11 and practiced in the basement laundry room at Lauderdale Courts. He played gigs in the malls and courtyards of the courts with other musicians who lived there. After high school he worked at Precision Tool Company, then drove a truck for the Crown Electric Company. In the summer of 1953 Presley paid $4 to record the first of two double-sided demo acetates at Sun Studios, My Happiness, and That's When Your Heartaches Begin, which were popular ballads at the time. While Presley claimed to have recorded the demo as a birthday present for his mother this is sometimes disputed since Gladys Presley's birthday was in April and he recorded the acetate in July. Sun Records founder Sam Phillips and assistant Marion Keisker heard the discs and called him in June 1954 to fill in for a missing ballad singer. Although that session was not productive, Sam Phillips put Elvis together with local musicians Scotty Moore and Bill Black to see what might develop. During a rehearsal break on July 5, 1954 Elvis began singing a blues song written by Arthur Crudup called, That's All Right. Phillips liked the resulting record and released it as a 7-8 RPM single backed with Elvis' hopped-up version of Bill Monroe's bluegrass song, Blue Moon of Kentucky. Memphis radio station WHBQ began airing it two days later, the record became a local hit and Elvis began a regular touring schedule which expanded his fame beyond Tennessee. Presley was booked on Nashville's Grand Ole Opry but in a bitter disappointment his performance was not well received. He continued to tour the U.S. South and on October 16, 1954 he made his first appearance on Louisiana Hayride, a radio broadcast of live country music in Shreveport, Louisiana and was a hit with a large audience accustomed to mostly pure country music sounds. Following this Presley was signed to a one-year contract for a weekly performance and he was soon introduced to Colonel Tom Parker. Parker took over Presley's career by contract on August 18, 1955. The Colonel established two recording companies for Presley and demanded that composers share their royalties with the singer. He wasted no time in marketing his new product to the hilt, pushing Elvis buttons and trinkets, and even lipstick and cookware. According to Marty Lacker, a member of the Memphis Mafia, Elvis had no business savvy or skills and he relied on his manager Parker for anything to do with contracts and deals. Lacker says he thought of Parker as a hustler and scam artist who abused Elvis's reliance on him. If Parker ever thought Elvis was going to be around somebody who would influence him, Parker did his utmost to end that relationship. At Parker's urging, Presley also shifted his focus from music to Hollywood. For instance, under his manager's influence, Elvis was forced to take the chief part in some low budget standard musical comedies, see movies, section below. With money seemingly being at the forefront of all decisions made by the colonel, his management contract with Elvis was even renegotiated to an even 50-50 split between the two. On August 15, 1955 Elvis Presley was signed by Hank Snow Attractions, a management company jointly owned by singer Hank Snow and Colonel Parker, who negotiated Presley's signing with RCA Records on November 21, 1955. On January 27, 1956 Elvis' sixth single and his first on RCA, Heartbreak Hotel, I Was the One, was released and made the pop charts, it reached number one in April. The next day Presley's national television debut on the Dorsey Brothers stage show marked the beginning of his transition into a teen idol. On June 5, 1956 Presley scandalized the audience of the The Milton Berle Show with suggestive hip movements while performing his second RCA single, Hound Dog. Television critics across the country slammed the performance for its appalling lack of musicality, vulgarity, and animalism. The reaction was so severe, Presley was obliged to explain himself on a local New York City TV show, High Gardner Calling. Shortly thereafter he appeared on the Steve Allen show dressed in a tuxedo, billed as the new Elvis Presley, and singing, Hound Dog, to a Basset Hound, an experience Presley later said he found humiliating. 
After a string of other TV appearances Presley made his first performance on the top-rated Ed Sullivan show on September 9, earning the broadcast a record 52 to 60 million viewers 82.6% of the viewership that night. By the time of his second Sullivan appearance on October 28 Presley had dyed his sandy blonde hair jet black. Opposition gathered against him and even more so against his gyrations on stage. The December 1956 issue of Cosmopolitan magazine described Presley as behaving like a sex maniac in public. On his third and final Sullivan appearance, January 6, 1957, Sullivan bowed to pressure from moralists and ordered that Presley be televised from the waist up to avoid showing his controversial hip movements. Meanwhile the press had taken to calling him Elvis the Pelvis, a nickname he is said to have thoroughly disliked. Don't Be Cruel and Hound Dog topped the pop, black and country charts in 1956 and many more hit records followed. Over the next 21 years, until his death in 1977 Elvis had 146 Hot 100 hits, 112 Top 40 hits, 72 Top 20 hits and 40 Top 10 hits, an achievement that has never been matched by any solo artist. Ironically, for all the controversy surrounding his early career, Elvis Presley's roots in religious music ran deep. In Tupelo, Mississippi Vernon and Gladys Presley were what was disparagingly referred to as poor white trash from the wrong side of the tracks at the east end of town. Their Depression-era home, where Elvis was born in 1935, was a two-room shack on one of several dirt tracks forming a small community off Old Saltillo Road. They belonged to a local assembly of God Pentecostal Church which played an important role in their lives. For Elvis Presley it provided an environment from which he would instinctively adopt the music, sound and accompanying body movements in his later rock and roll singing performances. The African-American form of music that became known as rhythm and blues, which also evolved from gospel songs, was also a part of Presley's childhood world and he probably heard it on a regular basis in the black section of Tupelo known as Shakerog, which was between Tupelo and East Tupelo, and was demolished in the 1960s as part of an urban renewal project. The church is said to have brought the Presleys, along with the rest of its desperately poor congregation, a message of hope wrapped around, hell, fire, and brimstone, sermons. For nearly a quarter century the Pentecostal movement was interracial and during the 1930s and 1940s many of these poor churches did not adopt the growing policy of racial segregation. Elvis Presley returned to the United States on March 2, 1960, and was honorably discharged on March 5. While in the army, he received a black belt in Kempo and attained the rank of sergeant. The musical Bye Bye Birdie satirizes the events of the draft of Elvis Presley, placing fictional superstar Conrad Birdie in the position of Elvis. Many observers, including John Lennon, later claimed that following Presley's return from military service the quality of his recorded output dropped, although others thought he was still capable of creating records equal to his best, and did so on the infrequent occasions where he was presented with decent material at his movie recording sessions. Presley himself became deeply dissatisfied with the direction his career would take over the ensuing seven years, notably the film contract with a demanding schedule that eliminated creative recording and giving public concerts. In 1960 the album Elvis is Back was recorded. This, like his first two albums, Elvis Presley and Elvis, are considered by many of his fans to be his best work. With this drop off, and in the face of the social upheaval of the 1960s and the British invasion spearheaded by the Beatles, Presley's star faded slightly before a triumphant televised performance later dubbed the comeback special. Aired on the NBC network on December 3, 1968, the show saw him return to his rock and roll roots. His 1969 return to live performances, first in Las Vegas and then across the country, was noted for the constant stream of sold-out shows, with many setting attendance records in the venues where he performed. Elvis died at his home Graceland in Memphis, Tennessee on August 16, 1977. He was found on the floor of his bedroom's bathroom ensuite by girlfriend Ginger Alden who had been asleep in his bed. He was transported to Baptist Memorial Hospital where doctors pronounced him dead at 3.30 p.m. He was 42 years old.